Hi children, welcome to Ictit Learning. So uh, this is the third part of chapter one of grade 11 programming chapter. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, I have done uh, separate videos from grade six onwards. Uh, but if you want to start with grade 11, you can directly go to the grade 11 playlist and start watching, right? So this is the third part of the um, chapter one. So I have done two uh, other chapters where in the first one I have discussed about how to analyze a problem and the second one I discussed about uh, these uh, control structures and uh, flow charts. So in this video I will be talking about pseudocodes. So hope you remember you can represent an algorithm in two ways, right? One thing is the flow chart which is a graphical interface representation but the second method is the pseudocode it's like uh, simple english terms right so uh, when you present an algorithm in simple english terms we call it as a pseudocode right so remember pseudocodes are independent of uh, computer language. That means you can have different kind of computer languages. Hope you have heard Java, C Sharp, C, C++, Pascal, Python. So many uh, programming languages are there. But uh, pseudocode you can develop first, right? Then you can convert that to the relevant computer language syntax, right? So that is why this is very important because uh, first you have to uh, know the logic of your problem, how to how you are going to solve your problem, and you have to develop either flowchart or the pseudocode, then you can convert that into any programming language, right? So if you have your pseudocode with you, it's very easy to uh, do the computer programming in that particular syntax because you have already developed your logic. Right. So in a pseudocode, like in the flowchart, in the flowchart, we had different kind of symbols. Hope you remember start, end, inputs, outputs, process. These have uh, different kind of symbols like that. Uh, in uh, pseudocode also, you have to remember there are some English terms we always use. Right. For example, like the start, it is the begin. So when you begin uh, an algorithm, you have to write begin keyword, right? So usually uh, write it in caps because then it is easy to identify that this is kind of a keyword, right? Like uh, it's the normal English terms we used in the pseudocode, right? So begin, similar to that, we have end also to indicate the end. So it's like the start and end, right? And then uh, for the input, when you're getting input from the user, you can either use input, read, get, all these terms are okay. Don't use all of them, use one, right? And then for the output, right? Uh, we can use output, display, show, those kind of uh, terms to tell this is the output of this pseudocode. And for the processing part or the calculations, we can use process or calculate terms. I will explain with an example, then you will really get this, right? Then for the selection, Right, usually if, if means the selection, you could consider whether if it is raining, then what you are going to do. So that is the if and then. Else means if it is, if the condition is not true, what you are going to do, right? Then you have to end if, you have to finish the if thing, right? For example, if it is raining, then you have to carry an umbrella. Else you don't have to carry an umbrella. So that's the end if, right? That is how the selection works. Then comes a for loop. That means for the repetition, you can do a for, all these three can be done, right? For and do, right? That means up to uh, some condition is satisfying, you are going to do this, right? While end. So while some condition is true, also you can do the same thing repetitively and then you can end the while, right? Repeat until, that is also can be used for the repetition. So you, you repeat something until this condition is satisfied. When we do the examples, you will understand. But for the time being, you remember these are the key terms you have to remember when you're writing a pseudocode, right? So uh, don't write start here. So because it's not wrong, but uh, because you are uh, targeting an exam, always try to follow these uh, keywords because when you write a pseudocode, now, for example, if I, if I want to write a pseudocode for my programs, I can write start and those terms are not a must to have because it's for your reference. But as you are doing an exam, uh, please make sure these keywords are used. Then uh, it will tally with your marking scheme as well. Okay. 
So remember pseudocodes and flowcharts, it's for the easiness of the programmer, right? To make your program more structured, more accurate, because if you do this before you write in the real program, uh, you know what's really happening. You have a plan, right? That's why these things are very important. Okay, first one, first example, find, sorry, finding the area of a circle. So begin and end should be there, like in the flow chart, very similar to that. So what is the input you have to get? You have to get the radius to calculate the area. It's um, for the equation, this is the equation, right? Phi R square, right? So for phi is a like constant, so you know that value, but the radius you have to take. It is depend on depending on the circle you are calculating the uh, area. So you get it for this one. You can write input radius or read radius or get radius anything. Uh, then you calculate. This is the process part. Remember the rectangle we use for the flow chart. So this is the process part. You calculate your area, right? You can write the equation also if you want. Then the output. You can here write output, display, show, any keyword is okay. What is you are going to display? Your area. You can write as a sentence also, the area of the circle is, and you can print the area. Because area, remember here, what happened is this value is calculated and assign it to here. Right? So that's why we are printing area here. Okay. So that's a very simple one, which doesn't have any uh, selection or repetition, anything. Next example, finding whether a number is odd or even, right? You have begin and end, right? Then you have to read or you have to take the input, your number, because without the number, you cannot tell what it, what it is. Is it odd or even? You cannot tell. So you have to get input, your number. So here they are taking that number as n. We learn these things like variables later in when you're learning the programming language. So you take the number and put it it to a kind of a variable and you keep it as n. Then this is the process part, right? What you do, what you calculate or what you process. You take the number, divide it by two, and then you get the remainder. So that is your process part, right? You have to write it in simple English, nothing big, right? No need to write the same thing. You can write, uh, calculate the remainder after dividing the number by two, you can get this, right? This is a calculation part. Ah, this is the selection I told you. If, see, if, then, else, and if. That, that those were the keywords we have to use for the selection, right? Hope you remember. So here, if remainder is zero, then you display or you output the number is even. Else, if the remainder is one, right? Because we can get either remainder is zero or remainder is one, only two options. So else part is remainder is one, then you display it's an odd number. There's end if, please remember end if, because a lot of kids uh, forget this. So end if means the selection is done, right? So this is a simple program, but if you have a huge, like long program, then you will understand the importance of this end if. Then you end the whole pseudocode, okay? Next example. Finding the total of some numbers, like we have maybe 10 numbers, uh, we have to, uh, Add them all and get the total, right? So begin and end is there, right? Initially, total is zero. So this is like a initiating your variables. You have this zero and you make the total as zero because now you don't have anything. Now, can you see this is the for loop for the repetition? So you can use either one of these. There were three things, remember? Uh, for do, while, and while repeat until so here they have used repeat until okay i will tell uh, how but there are slight differences in this so here you repeat this repeat until this is the repetition part this will be happening a lot of time until until this condition is satisfied that means numbers are over you may have five numbers you may have 10 numbers until the numbers are over you have to repeat this so that is the repeat block right so what you're going to do you repeat right read the number as n so you read the first number actually right? you read the first number and may assign it to n variable and then you calculate your total now initially total is zero for the zero you are adding your new number maybe uh, one 
So 0 plus 1 is 1. Now your total has been changed. Then you check the condition. Now see in this model, in this block, the difference is you check the condition after you iterate the first iteration. You first iteration, you just do. Now you will learn when you're learning while thing. First you check the condition and you do. But here, first time, you just do it. And then only you check the condition. Until the numbers are over. Is, is the numbers are over? No. If not, you do it again. You read the next number. Maybe it's two. You read that. You calculate the total. Now your total is not zero. Your total is one. One plus two is three. Your total is three. And again, you check the condition. Now your number is three. You read it. Read the number three. And three plus three. Total is three now. Three plus three is six. So you do this until your numbers are over. So here the difference is first time you just do and then only you check the condition. Okay. Then you display or you output your total value. Right. Total means this variable value. You can write a sentence also. Total is equal to and this total value. Right. This is this total means you are uh, typing the value of this variable. Okay. Next up. Finding the total and the average of 10 numbers, right? Begin and end is there. Same thing like the earlier, but here it's additionally you have average also, right? So you have begin and end, you have total like the earlier example, but you have average also this time, right? And here you have n, like you have a counter. We call these things as count or counter. So you have n as one, right? So you are increasing this number of n until it's 10 because there are only 10 numbers. Now see here, this is the while loop we have. While, end while. Remember end if, end while, that those are must to tell where this repetition block ends. It's a must to have. So here while, right? While n is uh, less than or equal to 10. Now initially n is one, right? So yes, this condition is true. N is less than 10. You go here, you read the number, maybe your number is one. So you calculate the total. That means total is initially zero. Zero, zero plus one is one, right? And you increase the, your counter. Now you are going to do the second number. Remember, n is not the number. N is just a counter, right? Now you are going to do the second number. Okay, you go up and check the condition. Still n is two. Because we haven't gone through all the 10 numbers. We have gone only through the second number. Now we are in second number. You read the next number. Maybe your number is now three, right? So your total was one, one plus three. Now your total is four, right? Then you go to this one. Now your n was actually two, two plus one is three. You are going for the third number, right? And you check the condition, right? Uh, we'll see uh, now your condition is true because three is less than 10. So you have to go through the loop again. Like this, you will do until 10 numbers you read. That means n is 10. Now in the n, is, when, when n is n plus one is 11. So you go here and 11, is it less than 10? No, no, no. This condition is not satisfied. So you go out of the loop. Right. So when we come here, we have 10 numbers. We have read all the 10 numbers and we add them together and we have some total value. So how to calculate the average? Right. So your total value, you have to divide by not n, by n minus 1, because now your n is 11. Right. You have to divide by 10. We know how to take the average. You have to divide by the number of elements you have. So we have, we have, we have we have only 10 elements, but your n was one, 11 because we have increased it here. So that's why a total divided by 10 also correct. Just But here it's uh, 11 minus 1. So you get the average and you display total and the average. So that's the end of your uh, pseudo code. So here, remember in the earlier one, we ran the first loop and then only we check the condition. But here... We check the condition first and then we'll go here. 
So there's a difference between those two blocks, right? So in the first one, we run the first time, first iteration, and then only check the condition. But here you check the condition and then you go through the iteration, okay? So here they have explained uh, some of uh, these things. I have already explained, but I will quickly go through. Uh, following are some of the facts about the pseudocode. So here we have total average numbers. I told them uh, are variables. They are variables, right? So we get the values assigned to number and the total and the average and the n also it is incrementing, right? So n is indicating the number of repetition, number of times or number of elements you have to go through. Right? So initially we have statements total equals zero, average equals zero, because you are these are the initial values, right? Then we have the statement n is equal to one. So what happens is here we start with the first element. We are assigning that uh, value one to n, right? Then this is the condition. N is less than or equal. Remember equal thing also there. Right, so there are actually two hidden conditions in this. So this, if this condition is satisfied, only the while loop will be uh, iterated. Right. So here, while n less than or equal to ten indicates that the loop should be repeat repeated until the value of n is either ten or e less than ten. Right, not more than ten. So repetition occurs when the value of n is less than is 10 or less than 10, right? This means till the condition n is less than or equal to 10 is true, repetition will be continuously happening. And when the n becomes 11, uh, repetition should stop, okay? That means the condition is false, we call, right? So read is the like the input, you are taking the input, you get in the next number, that always you have to read uh, 10 numbers, right? Then you have the total, total equals to total plus number denotes that the present value of the total, you take it and you add it with the new number you are reading and then you get the final result and assign it back to the total. This is one of the very popular statement, similar structure we follow a lot of time when you are writing programs. Initially, it will be a bit tricky for you, but if you get it, it's not very uh, tricky, right? So this one, n equals n plus one, actually what you do here is you increase the number of repetition, right? You add one to the present value of n. That means you are easy to are in fifth number or sixth number, five plus one or six plus one, and you go with the number of uh, numbers, how many numbers you have to iterate, right? Then you have end while, right? End while is actually still, we have to stop the repetition, right? So all these reading number, total, assigning the total value and increase the n, this thing happen or repeat, will repeat until the condition is satisfied only. If the condition is false, then the repetition stops. And that time the value of n is not 10, it is 11, right? That is why the condition become false because 11 is not less than or equal to 10. So the condition become false. That's why we end the loop and come out, right? Then we calculate the average, right? Directly you can do is total divide by 10, but here they have used 10 and done it, no worries. And then finally you display your total and the average. Uh, so this will show the total of 10 numbers and its average, right? So that is how this uh, program will run, okay? So they, here they have given you some observation. So uh, remember when you um, assign a value to a variable, the previous value is actually lost. Remember totally initially it was zero. Then for the total, you are adding the new number, right? A new number was one. So zero plus one, the total is now one. So the zero value will vanish, right? It'll be lost. So when the statement total equals total plus number is executed, the value, assigned to the number variable is added to the value assigned to the total variable and the final result only you are getting for the total, right? So this is not a mathematical formula. Uh, this kind of statements we are using in our programming concepts, right? Okay, next part. 
This is also not very hard thing. So converting flow charts to the pseudocodes. And now uh, we know algorithm can be represented either in flow chart or in pseudocode. So for example, if you have a flow chart here, how to convert it into a pseudocode? Not very hard, both ways you can do, right? So I'm uh, going through these examples to show you that textbook has everything, right? You don't have to follow so many extra things. First, understand your textbook. That's the main important thing I want to emphasize. That's why I'm going through the textbook. Each page I'm discussing. If you have watched my videos from grade six, I have used only the textbooks, right? So I can easily copy this to a presentation and show, but it's not going to work because you have this with you, right? So a lot of um, teachers I know, what they do is they put these things into a whiteboard or a presentation and just explain the same thing, but they don't want to tell the students that these things are already available in your textbook. So go through the textbook first, study the textbook, be confident about the textbook. If you can handle any questions in the textbook, then go for the additional, yeah, you have to go for the additional knowledge, that's true additional questions go to the do the past papers but first step is you should be really good at your textbook so please go through all the all of these examples and get this to your head and be uh, confident about it then you can go to any you can if you understand this concept you can do any question right no worries okay so here this is the flow chart this is about uh, like how to uh, prepare a tea so I will quickly go through the flow chart. You start, right? Then you put the tea bag into the cup, right? So uh, this is kind of a process. Then there's a condition. Is water boiled? Already boiled? No. Then you have to boil the water and come back again. Is water boiled? Yes. Now what is boiled? Yes. Okay. Pour the water in the cup. So here we are using tea bag uh, to prepare the tea. Right, then you go and see, do you want sugar? Some people don't want sugar. So then you can end the teacup. You just can serve the, just the tea. But if you want sugar, yes. Okay, add sugar, stir the thing. And then again, check. Sometimes the sugar is not enough. No, we need more sugar. Yes, we need more sugar. Yes. So add sugar again, stir the tea, and then you check. Okay, now sugar is okay so no need of more sugar you end the process right? same thing see begin and end pseudocode right so these things you can just write in english because uh, this is the process kind of you put the tea bag in cup then this is the while loop this part this part is the while or you can use any of these uh, repetitive blocks but here they have used while so in the while you check the condition not water boiled. Uh, this is the not term. If the water is not boiled, okay, boil water. Still not boiled, boil water. Do it until this condition is satisfied. Ah, okay. Water is now boiled. Okay, so then this condition is not satisfied. It's false. Then you come out, pour tea, sorry, pour water in the cup. Right? Then you have another if condition, another conditional block. So here you check while sugar needed. Do we need sugar? Yes, we need. If this, it's satisfied, okay, you need sugar, add sugar, stir the tea, right? Again, check the condition. Do you still need? Yes, add sugar, stir the tea. Do you still need? No, no, it's okay. So end while and you finish the process. Same thing, you convert it to pseudocode. Next example. Finding the large number uh, from two numbers. You have two numbers. You have to find which is larger. For example, two and four is there. So you have to find four is the larger number like that. So you have start. You have to get the input. So see, this is the input. See the symbols, right? So it's a parallelogram. You input the two numbers. Okay, here there's a condition. If the first number is larger than the second number, okay, then what is the large number? N1 is the large number, right? And then you output it. But if N1 is not the large number, 
for example, two and four, two is not larger, right? So it's this condition is false, then you go here. So larger number is the second number. Four is the larger number. Okay, you get it and you finish it up to here and then you output your larger number. Here your output will be in two. That means number four, something like that. So here, this is the uh, same thing, sort of code. You have begin and end, right? And this is your input. I told you, you can use input, read, get all these terms for here. You get N1 and N2. These are the two numbers of uh, what you're going to compare. So this is the condition. This is a very simple one. There's no any repetition here. So if N1 is larger than N2, then what is your large number? N1, like this, 10 and 5. So 10 and 5. 10 is larger than 5. Yes, so your large number is First number should be the larger number. 10 is the larger number. But if this condition is false, like the early example, we took 2 and 4, 2 is not greater than 4. No, this condition is false. You go for the else part. Okay, your large number is the second number. 4 is the larger number. Right? So you end if. Right? So And then you display your large number. You can use output, uh, display those kind of things for here. And you end the process. Now, this is a bit complicated. You have 10 input numbers. You read all of them and you get the smallest number from all these 10 numbers, right? Okay, so this is a pseudo uh, flow chart. We'll go through the flow chart and then we'll see how uh, we convert this to um, a pseudocode. You have start and end right here, start and end. You get the first number, right? So you have to calculate the uh, smallest one. So for the smallest number, we keep a uh, variable called mean, minima, mean. So we assign this number, first number, anything you read, we assign it to the minimum. We'll think it's two. So you get that value two, not two. We'll think it's at three. So we get the number three and assign it to minimum. So minimum is three, count is one, because we have to go through 10 numbers. For that, we keep a count. And we check this. Okay, count is less than 10. Yes, still count is one. First number we are going to think about. First number is number three. You get the input. You get uh, n, right? Because if it is less than 10 only, you do this, right? Now already you uh, took the first number as three, then the next number you are going to read. That means we'll think it's uh, two, right? Okay, you input the second number, right? What is your minimum? Minimum is your first number. First number was three. Three, this one is two. Two is less than three. Yes, yes, two is less than three. Yes. So your minimum is now going to change. Your minimum is now two, right? So this is yes part, right? Then you go here, you increase the count because you have to go to the second number. now. You go to here, still two is less than 10, yeah, right? So it's yes. You come here, you read the next number. Next number is, we'll think, four. Now, four is less than, what is your minimum now? Earlier minimum was three, but then it changed to two. Now, two. Four is less than two. No. No, it's not true. So, your minimum is not changing. Minimum is still two. So, no, you increase the count. You go for the next number. Right now, this is the first number, second number. Now, this is the third number you are going to think about. So, the three is less than 10, right? Three is less than 10. Yes, you take the next number. We'll think next number is seven, right? So, seven, is it less than two? Your minimum was two. No, no, you don't change your minimum, go up. So, all these examples I'm taking is like imaginary things. Hope you understand, right? So, you go for next number. Right, your count you increase for the count is now three. Three plus one is four. Four, fourth number you are going to check. So your count is four is less than ten. Yes, you get the next number. Right, we'll think your input is now one. Okay, one is less than your minimum was two earlier. Ah, yes, one is less than two. You go and change your minimum. Now your minimum is one. Min is changed to one. 
you go and count it like this you iterate through all your 10 numbers and when the count is becoming 11 after you process all the 10 numbers your count will become 11 11 is less than 10 no you output your minimum we'll, we'll assume that our minimum was like one until we have actually processed few numbers and got the minimum so you output your minimum and that's the end of your process okay so same thing uh, you can uh, do it as the uh, pseudocode also you have begin and end right you input your number this is the first time you get the number and you assign that number to your minimum and your count is one then this is the while block see this is the repetition so repetition will happen until your count is less than 10 because you start with one one two three four like that you increase it and when the count is 11 you stop it 11 is not less than 10, you stop it there, right? But we'll see what we'll do here. So you output number, there's a small printing mistake. This should be input, right? So you input the number, next number you are going to read, right? First number you read it as three, then you read the next number, we'll think it's two, right? You get the two, two is less than three, yes. So you change your minimum, your minimum become two and you end if, and you, increase the count, you go for the next number, right? And you check the condition. So now it's a one, then one plus one is two. Now it's two is less than 10. Yes, we go inside. Then this is the input. You read the next number. There's a small printing mistake. Take the next number, right? And you read it. And then you check whether this condition is satisfied. For example, if it is four, four is not less than two. Right, so you should don't change it, you go out. So, still minimum is two, like that. You will continuously do it until this condition is satisfied. Only after this is getting false, you come out and you print your minimum. Okay, so you can try uh, this with uh, different numbers, like for example. Uh, now, in my case, I uh, start with three. Then I go with two. Then uh, you can use one. You can use four. So you can have your own numbers and do this and see. Okay. So that is how I did. I no need to be the same thing. Uh, you can follow like this. Take some num numbers. Take 10 numbers and do it and see. That is how you have to read the programs. Your mind should work like a compile, how to read these programs. Right? That's how you should train your head. Okay. So you can take any of these numbers and find whether your minimum is correct. Now, in this case, minimum should be one. Right. So you do it and see whether you print finally minimum is one. If you don't do it, that means your program has a problem. That is what we will we'll learn this in debugging uh, part. Debugging means you find the problems or you find the bugs of your program. Right? You cannot perfectly write a program like this. You have to uh, do try and errors. You have to do these examples and see whether it's correct. If it's wrong, you have to debug and correct it. Okay. Okay. So that is the end of uh, part three. Uh, we'll meet uh, with another pro uh, another uh, video. Right. So if you like my videos, if you learn something, please. Uh, subscribe if you have not, not subscribed still and press the bell notification also and uh, please do comment uh, if you have questions or if you learn something please do comment and please share these videos among your friends right thank you very much